Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. You know the deal. Um, thermostats. Just want to show you and give you a bit of information specifically on thermostats. Again, this probably co covers a little bit for people that don't know, but this is a thermostat. Now, um, this came out of a vehicle and it hadn't been out for, let me guess here, right, was that ever changed? Trying to think. Mm, no, that's original. So that's a 12 year old thermostat. Okay, I just want to show you the quality of the materials and the coolant. It's like, you know, there's no rust, corrosion, whatever. The only place there's rust and corrosion, I'll show you. Let's pull this. This is a rubber seal, right? So obviously the quality of the um, thermostat's a lot better than the um, rubber gasket. The rubber gasket's sitting on cast iron, right? So there it is. That's why you need to replace that if you're taking it out for whatever reason, but you don't need to replace a thermostat unless, so we're gonna to to tell you how to diagnose if you've got a problem with your thermostat. Again, lots of different vehicles out there. This is a 1KD FTV, and generally the thermostat, I'm just gonna grab a rag and just give one area a little wipe just to show you. It'll probably have a number, normally has a number stamped on it telling you what what uh, temperature in Celsius usually. Okay. See, 82 degrees, right? So basically what happens at 82 degrees, this black area here, which happens to be in this case, it's got a, it's a bit of rubber, so it's a really good seal, eh? Um, this is just a little bypass. That should be at the top when it's positioned into the vehicle, when you put it in the side of the block. So you need a new rubber O-ring. Um, basically, yeah, once it gets to 82 degrees, this is going to move backwards. So it's going to open, so there's a spring here to hold it shut. That's going to move backwards and compress that spring to allow the coolant to flow in the, in the gap there. And it'll open a little bit. And then as soon as, you know, the cooler water or coolant passes it, it is going to close again. Okay, so it's constantly opening and closing depending on whether you're going up or down a hill and how hard you, heavy your right foot is. So that's the deal. When you probably, I oh know, this on here normally, once it goes all the way, that'll block the bypass. So basically, <clears throat> when it's open all the way, you want maximum cooling, okay? So if it happens to go all the way, that blocks any, you know, the heater hose system type thing, which is for your heater. So that's what that's for. Um, so yeah, a bit of a useless video, I just want to show you, it's got a rubber seal on it, so if you're ever planning to take it out, you probably don't need to replace it, but you will need to replace that, because look, it just gets all, it's all brittle, it's mainly, see the crud, you know, you try and put that back in and different, so it's just going to leak, that's rubbish, okay? Thermostat's not rubbish, the seal's rubbish. Now why is the thermostat not rubbish? Okay, so as I said, in a video recently, or me, long time ago maybe, but been around a little while and there's a lot of different vehicles and a lot of different quality thermostats and some of them are just hopeless you know they stick shut they stick open you've got you know if your car's running cold and it doesn't warm up then it's stuck open you know um, sometimes they're stuck shut that's why they run a bit hot they stick shut they don't open up till later so you know you take it out and you put it in some well you don't put it in boiling water you put it in hot water put it in a kettle with no lid ideally you know with a thermometer and all that and you watch the temperature and you take note of when it opens. A really good way to do it is to use a thin piece of wire. Once it opens, <coughs> stick the wire through the hole because you might not be able to see it. And then pull it out, stick the wire through the hole and then just hang it by the wire in the water and watch the temperature. And as it hits what temperature when it drops, that's obviously when it's opened up, right? Then you've got that first point of opening. So wherever it's, wherever it's at at that temperature. Um, with these ones in the 1KD and Toyotas, they're just awesome. Like, you know, there's no money in Toyotas kind of thing because, you know, I mean, you know, people are going, oh, yeah, you know, there is. Well, look, the parts are expensive. The ser that's maybe why the service parts are so expensive because, you know, they've got to make a dollar out of that. I, look, I don't agree with it. A lot of the filters and that are, in my opinion, way too expensive. It would be better if the pricing was more fair for a piece of paper that's been folded up. You know, you know, you can get a Holden or Ford one aftermarket from Repco for ten bucks. Well, you know, there's not, it's not that much different. Okay, so the cost doesn't need to be sixty dollars for an air filter or a hundred dollars for a fuel filter. I don't agree with that, but it's what it is. 
and you don't have to use those. You've got aftermarket options. There's a lot of really cheap brands out there. You can do that if you like. It's up to you. Now, I suggest using genuine thermostats. You've probably got no problem with it. The way to diagnose it and work out if it's working right is generally with these vehicles. I can tell you in Melbourne. I'm in Melbourne. so And all the other cars I worked on interstate over the years. And, you know, I've seen a lot of these plugged in on the diagnostic, believe it or not. And they all idle at about 83 degrees. That is, it'll take a while to get there to 83 degrees, but once they get there, that's it. They're generally not anywhere outside of there. Now, I'll say that 82 is acceptable. I'd say that 83 or 84 is even acceptable. Even 85, maybe 86, right? So, I don't even know what I'm saying. Thereabouts is acceptable. Now, <clears throat> just because it opens early and it idles a bit warmer doesn't mean it's gonna run hotter. It just means it's already open. So then when you're driving, so under the same conditions that it's running at 86 degrees, let's say, 86, 87 on a normal drive, whether it's this thermostat that, say, that idles at 83 or another one that idles at 85, there's still going to be the same amount open, most likely, at those same conditions when they'd both be at 86, if you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. Just because the idle temperature's changed doesn't mean it's going to change for the rest of it but I would say if yours is not idling at 83 and it's more than one degree either side it could be two three or four if it's anything like that change your thermostat because <coughs> it's not normal based on we've seen hundreds okay if not thousands we've seen them that's what's normal so if it's not normal change it and that's how I roll we look at what's normal on all these vehicles and if that's normal if yours is doing something that's not normal get rid of it right so i'm not telling you all need to go replace your thermostat i'd rather you didn't because most of them i've seen maybe one or two a year that are not on 83 and they're usually pretty close but when you've got a problem you'll know you'll see it on 78 and it'll just be staying there it'll be on 80 and just staying there it'll be on 87 or 88 and just staying there doesn't mean it's the thermostat either but it probably is because of the quality of the coolant and how clean everything stays as you can see here so does the internal of the cooling system and the, and the radiator core. We did another video recently explaining the cooling system operation and all that sort of thing. So we're not going to go into it too much. But by having good clean coolant, it's not there to keep your cooling system cool. It's there to prevent the rust and the corrosion and the buildup of scale inside the cooling system, which would reduce its effectiveness. Okay, So while everything's clean, it can still work perfectly effective. Okay. I don't know what else I can tell you. That's your thermostat. It's not where you think it is. On a lot of cars, it's up the top in that top radiator hose in that what I often call a thermostat housing, but it's not. It's a water outlet housing or a water outlet. All you'll find there is a gasket, and then you'll need another gasket. We did a video on that, I think, just yesterday or something, showing some of those part numbers. That's that gasket, one of that water outlet gasket, if I mention it. This is down near the alternator. It's a bit of a pain to get to, you know. You've got to sort of take the airbox out. It's the easiest way and a few other things out of the way. Of course, you're going to lose your coolant because it's down low. Um, but, you know, if you think you're doing the right thing by going, oh, I'm going to change the coolant, I'm going to chuck a thermostat in it, you're probably wasting your time, okay? And these don't leak either, by the way. As much as it's rusty and everything, never seen one leak. It would leak if you tried to put it back, I think. So, anyway, guys, hope that's helped. That's a little bit about thermostats, the temperature, what's normal or not. Um, you do need to replace the rubber seal if you're planning to take it out. Don't expect to take it out and put it back in without that gasket. Use Genuine is the go for both of those. These are only, I don't know, 25 bucks or something. These would be a few bucks. So it's small money, mate. It's half the price of an air filter. So stay genuine. Um, as I said with filters, they are very expensive. Feel free if you want to go aftermarket. Um, hey, put some posts up on our Facebook groups or even a reply here as to what, I oh, know it's not relevant, we probably should just do another video for that. This is Thermostats. We're done. There's not much to say. If you haven't already subscribed, there's heaps better videos than this one. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See ya.